Now, though, to continue our inspirational story series, we are joined in the Harvey Norman Lounge by the incredible Dave Greenberg, <laughs> who after... Tw don't hurt yourself, Dave. You are incredible. <laughs> after 25 years as a crew member with Life Flight, the Westpac Rescue Helicopter Service in Wellington has recounted some of the most incredible missions in a brand new book. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. It is lovely to have you here. Thanks for having me. First up, must say, you really essentially did your first rescue when you were 13, didn't you? Tell me about that. I did. I was, I was trained in first aid CPR as a junior fireman and a few weeks before my 14th birthday walking down the street in New York City and a guy collapsed in front of me and I got really excited because I knew what to do and then I got really horrified when he had no pulse wow. and um, but wow. I started CPR with another woman and yeah we saved his life Wow, that must have been a great feeling. It was. It was a real turning point in my life. Mm. Okay, and you took it from there and you've been involved with so many rescues over the 25 years. Could you put a number on it? It's roughly 4,000. Wow. Uh, yeah, so just under 4,000 between the helicopter and the fixed wing airplane. Do you miss it? Every day. Right. Yeah, you know, best job ever. Oh, the right. best, exactly. I mean, incredible job. You obviously have done many jobs within the service, but you were one of the guys that they call, well, you got, you call dope on a rope. Yeah, that, Kevin Costner called it that in a movie called The Guardian. They named the guy on the bottom of the rope the dope on the rope. And it's really appropriate because when you're hanging below, you've got no control of your own destiny. It's all up to the team up above and the equipment. So you just hang there and go for the ride. What was it, Dave, that took you from that CPR experience when you were young to wanting to work with helicopters in particular? The helicopter thing was very lucky. I came to New Zealand on an IT contract and I approached Wellington Free and they'd had no place for me at the time and I approached Life Flight and they left and said thanks but I stayed in touch and next thing I knew as a volunteer and 25 years later they, I was gone. But yeah, it was a good ride. The thing is with your job, I mean, obviously it, it, you're rescuing people, but it must be terrifying for you. Have you ever felt close to death? The, my, they had a few close calls, but my worst was self-imposed. Uh, one day we were getting ready to winch Santa over at Carol's by Candlelight in Wellington and got another phone call, got in the helicopter, flew in the doorway, did winching, so standing outside the helicopter. And when I got back, I found I hadn't connected my harness. Ooh. So, um, so yeah, my biggest near-death experience I didn't even know about, but it, it was all my own fault. Gosh, that would be quite terrifying in hindsight. <laughs> it was, and it changed the way I did everything going forward. I always checked both ends of the harness. Would have been awkward for the Santa in the Park thing, too, <laughs> yeah. just quietly. Would have ruined a lot of Christmases, that's <laughs> a lot for sure. Of Christmases. So in this book, are you recounting you know, some of the more memorable rescues that you've done? Because I would assume that everyone you remember. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't remember them all. Right. And, um, but I do, the ones I recount are the ones that... I've stayed in touch with the people, and there aren't many I have. There's about a dozen, or very memorable for uh, different reasons. The Anzac Day crash in 2010, um, Chris Webb, who fell out of the harness back into huge seas in 97. Uh, neonatal unit um, transfers mm -hmm. are very close to me uh, wow. for a lot of reasons, and remember some of those, but never would never recognize the babies or the parents years later, um, but they all seem to remember me. And, but probably one of the best ones was 9-11, 2001. We saved my best friend's dad, and I went to sleep that night, and it was the best night ever. And I woke up a couple of hours later um, to the news of the planes and the buildings, and it became the worst day ever. So it was a big turnaround in yeah. just a couple of hours. You mentioned uh, losing it was Chris Webb. You'd rescued from a yacht, and then you dropped him again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, I wasn't the winch operator. I can't say that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, there's an incompatibility between our equipment and his life jacket, and he slipped out of the harness back into huge seas. And it was quite difficult finding him again, but luckily we did. You saw him. You spotted him when yeah, no one else could. Yeah, I don't know. I would have spotted something peripheral, peripheral off to my side. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, and just caught a glimpse of his orange suit. And, um, yeah, we found him. And then I went down for the rescue, which was quite exciting. Mm. I'm fascinated by people. And, you know, I'm so grateful that people like yourself exist, that they put themselves on the line to rescue others. So I will find that book really interesting. Who else do you think it's aimed at? 
Everyone. No, uh, <laughs> no it, it is really, people are fascinated by helicopters and the emergency services, but it's, um, yeah, yeah, I thought at first it was a boy's book, and then a lot of my female friends who have read it have just been just as fascinated. Anyone who likes the emergency services or stories like that, and there's some feel-good stories and oh, some gosh. terrifying ones. It's adventure. It's pure adventure. Oh, and I think it's going to be a great read. Hey, thank you so much for stopping by today. We thank really you very appreciate much. it. Yeah, good on you. Thanks for everything you've done. Yeah, cool. awesome. Thank Emergency you. Emergency Response is out right now. You can pick up a copy at all good bookstores. <laughs>